All right, so the point of tonight's lesson is to be able to find displacement graphically or from a graph. Now, this is pretty easy on a position time graph, which is our first example. And by the way, there are going to be about five example graphs, so use your note-taking space wisely. Uh, you should remember from a couple of nights ago that if you're looking at a position time graph, your displacement, or delta x, is just x final minus x initial. And so here, our final x position is 20 meters, and our initial is negative 10. So in this graph, it's easy to do. 20 meters minus negative 10 meters minus the negative is the same as adding. You get positive 30 meters. So people are asking about uh, displacement having a direction associated with it. When you're just dealing with one direction or one dimension, like you have positive x and negative x and you don't have y's or z's with it, you can set up your system so that positive means one direction and negative means another, and so the positive or the negative takes care of the direction part of the vector. All right, but that's how you find what I just did, displacement graphically from a position time graph. Pretty simple. But now we're going to do it from a velocity time graph. Something that's going to be kind of helpful to know, especially when you take calculus, is that displacement is the integral of velocity. Remember a couple nights ago when I said that velocity is the slope of a distance time graph? Well, doing the opposite of slope, kind of going backwards, is called integrating. And so we're going to learn how to graphically integrate here. You're not actually going to do the formalism for integral, which would look more like this right here. Displacement is the integral of velocity with respect to x. So that's the complicated way, or that's the calculus, I shouldn't say complicated, that's the calculus way of doing it. But here you're going to do it graphically. And to do it graphically, you have to know that displacement is the area under a curve on a velocity graph. And so, we just have to find the area of the graph. The simplest way to do this is to divide the graph into easily um, shapes you can easily find the area of. So, this graph up here, I could divide it into a triangle and a rectangle. So I've got two shapes. Now I find the total area. And when we're finding area under the curve, that means from the x-axis, so see wherever the zero is, that's going to be the stopping point for our area. We don't go all the way down the graph to negative infinity. All right, so let's find the area under these. All right, so let's find the area of the two shapes on here. And first, let's do a triangle. So the area for a triangle, a for a triangle, is one half the base times the height. Okay, the base of the triangle, this measure here, is five seconds. So one half. 5 seconds times the height, notice I am keeping my meters, 0 to 20 would be 20 meters per second. Okay, And that gives me 5 times 20 is 100, half of that is 50, 50 meters. So that's the area of the triangle. Now let's find the area of the rectangle. So area for a rectangle is just length times width. All right, the length of my rectangle, and just for not getting confused, I'm going to switch colors. Length of the rectangle goes from 5 to 15, that is 10 seconds. Okay, and then height of the rectangle goes from 0. 20, that is 20 meters per second, for a total of 200 meters. All right, to find the total area, now I just add them together. I'm going to move to the upper right-hand corner and add them together. So I have 50 meters from the triangle, and then I have 200 meters from the rectangle, 
which gives me a total of 250 meters. And that is the displacement. Notice how well all the units worked out there. Isn't that amazing? Now let's do a more tricky example. This one involves passing the x-axis. So notice there's a part above the x-axis and a part below it. We'll have two triangles. Let's have a green one and a red one. And let's start by finding the area for the green triangle. And I'm going to call the triangle on the left the green triangle. The formula is 1 half base times height. The base of this triangle goes from 0 seconds to 10 seconds. So that's my base. Oh, almost forgot my 1 half. Okay, and my height goes from 0 meters per second to 25 meters per second. Okay, 10 times 25 would be 250. Half of that would be 125 meters. So, 125 meters. Okay, now I'm going to do the other triangle in red. Area for a triangle, 1 half base times height. The base of our triangle goes from 10 to 14 seconds. So that total should be, sorry, just 4 seconds. 4 seconds. And the height of our triangle goes from 0 to negative 10. So our height is going to be negative 10 meters per second. So I've got 1 half times 4 is 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. I get equals negative 20 meters. Now I put those two together. 125 meters, negative 20 meters, 105 meters. Now what I worry is, to some of you, the negative down here might appear like it came out of Black magic. How did I how did I do that negative? Well notice when we went from zero to negative ten, that the change was negative, it went down. Whereas up here when we went from zero to twenty-five, that was a positive, it went up. So I just carried the negative through, kept it, and added it. So as long as you pay attention to what's going up, what's going down, what's negative, what's positive, you don't really have to think about the fact that this is a negative area and this is a positive area, although that's really what happened there. All right, you need to watch that slide again, I understand. Convince yourself that that one is correct. All right, now let's look at some problems you might actually have. I'm going to try to make this slide a bit bigger. All right, actual real life problems. If an object travels at 10 meters per second for 4 seconds, how far did it travel? All right, so you've, you're given a velocity and the time it travels over. What you can do if you're asked a question like this without a graph, you can then make this graph over here. See how we have 10 meters per second lasting for 4 seconds. And then you just find the area under that. And this is a uh, square, so this should be pretty easy. Not square, rectangle. This is a rectangle. should be pretty easy. Okay? All right, so there's the area we've got to find. We have 10 meters per second as one side of our rectangle, and we have 4 seconds as another side. So 10 meters per second here, 4 seconds here, and we've got 40 meters. And so the distance travels in that first one was 40 meters. Now let's do another one. If an object travels at 10 meters per second for 6 seconds, how far did it travel? Again, we're just finding the area under this line right here, which we've now extended to go to 6 seconds. Alright, there's the area we've got to find. We've got 10 meters on one side, sorry, 10 meters per second on one side, 6 seconds on the other. 10 meters per second times 6 seconds is 60 meters. Just showing you some real life examples. If you're confused about how I'm getting these areas, you could watch the other slides. Uh, if it's bothering you, the area of a rectangle is length times width. And so in each of these you can call one of these the length and one of these the width.
All right, now let's do some accelerated motion. So that means the velocity is changing. This word acceleration just means change in velocity. Okay. Acceleration is just change in velocity. If an object starts from rest and accelerates to 10 meters per second in 6 seconds, how far did it travel? So notice if you were given this problem, you could then draw this graph with the line going from 0 to 6, uh, 0 to 10 meters per second in a time of 6 seconds, and find the area under it. Okay, there's the triangle we have to find the area of. Formula for that area, 1 half base times height. And if you're wondering, wait, shouldn't 6 seconds be the base? It's okay. Multiplication is commutative. It would be the same thing either way. If you don't believe me, try it. Do 1 half times 6 times 10. You'll get the same answer. Calculate that out. Distance of 30 meters traveled. All right, that's really it. The main part of this is finding areas on a velocity time graph. You just have to know that if a question says find distance or displacement, you're finding the area. And if you get a question like this, with no graph, you can make one and then find the area. All right, lots of practice on this in class tomorrow. Make sure you've done the pre- and post-reading questions. And there's also extra practice problems if you need them. Um, I'm going to encourage you to look at those either tonight or when studying for the next quiz. I don't think anybody looked at them last week. They are there for you. They're not assigned. They're there for you if you need help. And feel free to come help me with them or come ask me for help with them. All right, that's it. Have a good night.